On a locale, my garden of roses, I think today we should talk about the Davos World Economic Forum. Donald Trump boarded Air Force One last night to fly to Davos, Switzerland for this World Economic Forum, which is an annual meeting of over 2,500 international business leaders, heads of state, celebrities, and journalists, which cites itself as committed to improving the state of the world by engaging in business, political, economic, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. Oof. Sounds quite globalist if you ask me. It amounts to a convention of wealthy and popular elites offering more to those who come to speak by giving, the t by giving them the title of a Davos man or a Davos woman or having been part of a Davos panel, but accomplishes very little to nothing on its own. President Trump intends to speak on his America First policy, a policy that is just as derided by globalists worldwide as it is by Democrats and communists back home. But just like an individual cannot improve by expecting others to do everything for them, the world cannot be improved by the coming together of nations to look good on a stage. A nation must improve itself before it can have anything to offer its citizens, let alone the world at large. If more nations took to a policy of fixing themselves first, instead of focusing entirely on a globalist agenda, the world would improve greatly as a consequence. You can't fix everything all at once, nor can you fix it by firing scattershot at problems once a year at an economic forum. Problems are solved by breaking them down to their component parts, a small, as small a fix as possible, and then assembling those small fixes together into component solutions. You're not going to save the world by bringing the world leaders together because they're sitting there up at the top. They don't actually recognize the needs of the individuals, of the communities, of the cities, of the counties. And they're going to be powerless to do anything about that anyways, because anything they do at that scale will be far too large. It's not just taking a machete where a scalpel is needed. It's taking a fucking space laser to situations where a, where a scalpel is needed. The fact of the matter is, these situations are oftentimes community-sized. And they're because of the similarity between locations, for example, the situation with gun control that I spoke about, excuse me, school shootings that I spoke about yesterday. These things can't be solved on a national or global scale. These problems have to be solved at a community level. And if individuals took more responsibility for themselves, and cities took responsibility for their cities, and we did things at that small of a scale, and then counties took responsibility for what is necessary for their counties, and states took responsibility for what is necessary for the state, and nations took responsibility for what is they're responsible for as a nation, we would see far, far greater results than seeing these enormous, enormous powers flaunting themselves at a conference for the sake of being seen and talking about things perfectly in an ideal global world than we will possibly see. But Donald Trump isn't the only one taking heat at Davos. The tech giants known as the Seven Sisters internationally are being held to account as well. Now, the Seven Sisters are Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Tencent and Alibaba, the last two of which being Chinese tech giants. And these companies control a good 30 to 50 percent of the world's economy, with 30 percent of the world's economic market being entirely dominated by advertising, and Google and Facebook alone controlling 75 percent of that market. Uh, as well as Amazon doing their damnedest to push Google out of that number one spot and take that position. Uh, P 
People including an advertising giant known as WPP are suggesting that governments need to regulate these companies. But this is entirely a play by these advertising firms to regain control from these tech giants. Honestly, it's more of a Goliath versus Goliath fight rather than the David versus Goliath fight that they wish to present it as. And honestly, it's kind of bothersome to watch. I certainly agree that something needs to be done about these giants, these oligarchs of tech companies, which exert absolute control over the world in many ways, especially economically. And it also are recreating feudalism in, the wor in a modern setting, using corporations as compared to manor heads and duchies. Uh, but I don't think the solution is greater regulation or taking the power of their hands and putting it in the hands of advertisers. I mean, let's face it, advertising has been slanted and slated by both sides of every argument as a leading cause of misinformation, of misrepresentation, and its tendency to minimize situations down to a single purchasable solution does no one any good? Well, no one but the companies which are being advertised, which profit and then in turn make profits for their stakeholders. But how is that going to make the world better? If anything, that's just going to make the world a more feudal environment. These mega corporations, which outstrip most nations in terms of wealth and power, need to be broken up for the antitrust concerns they present, not only in the United States, but the world at large. And not only them, advertising firms need to be broken down and split up as well, and that's something that no one seems to be talking about. Now, advertising is losing a lot of its power, and I don't suspect we're going to be seeing uh, advertising being a, you know, dominant market force as we move into the second decade of this century. Second, third, however you want to describe it, sorry, the, from 2020 and on. Google is losing a lot of grasp on their advertising power. Amazon is not well positioned yet to exceed a 20 to 25% market share of advertising control. And, well, Facebook is literally throwing away their interest in advertising to a certain degree for the sake of bringing back the feeling of actually getting messages you want in your Facebook feed to make Facebook more personal again. And advertisers are pulling out of these tech giants left and right because they cannot control where their advertisements go. It's a giant open market and those who explicitly wish to exploit that open market, such as was seen all throughout last year with the supposed children's shows that were absolutely horrifying on YouTube, getting massive views and massive advertising budgets, all because they had Elsa or Spider-Man or the Joker in them. And meanwhile, in these videos, they were having Elsa or the Joker kidnap kids, or worse, mind you. We're going to start seeing advertising losing a lot of its strength. Uh, as much as I can't stand the mainstream media corporations, most of them are doing an amazing job of separating themselves from their dependence on advertising and moving to a much more direct uh, financial model. And the smaller alt tech and alt uh, uh, media outlets, uh, for the most part, do far better on crowdsourced and direct funding models than they do on advertising, except in very specific cases. We're reaching a point that I think advertising has reached a critical mass, and this is going to shape the next 10 years of economics, because right now advertising, again, controls 30% of the world markets.
What we need to see is better options, better solutions, and not larger solutions, more localized solutions, solutions that work for a community, whether it be a physical community like a city or a, uh, a virtual community like an online group. And then these solutions will be, serve as examples or in the event of open source technology, a basis on which other solutions can be created out of modifying the original solution to fit the specific needs of that community, of that region, of that city. And as this happens, we're going to, I mean, honestly, I do believe we're moving towards further central decentralization, excuse me, and further decentralization will do wonders for the world. And that's something that is completely missing from the Davos World Economic Forum. What we need to see is decentralization. And as these smaller component parts of the world improve themselves, those improvements will serve as examples, as well as support structures for a much more successful, a much more secure world and future. Unfortunately, we're probably going to see Donald Trump take a lot of flack from other politicians in the world. He's already been slandered by Angela Merkel, and uh, it's tough to say what his conversation with Theresa May is going to look like. But at this point, the decentralization is almost inevitable, and it's only people with an, a heavily invested stock in globalization who are pushing this message. Unfortunately, their investment has paid off for decades now, and it will take time for those influences to finally be shown for what they are, massively selfish and extremely troublesome for everyone else, despite the fact that they're trying to speak as if they're doing what is best for the world. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.